So Bitcoin had a dramatic drop yesterday from 53,000 to 43,000 and more than half of this happened within a five minute candle. What really is going on? Let me tell you guys, it's very simple. Who are the weakest hands? It's the ones that are leveraged and yesterday we got 3.1 billion in long liquidations. Liquidations means that people are forced to sell. That creates liquidity in the market and moves these assets from those weak hands over to the stronger hands. So long term, an event like this isn't necessarily negative. It doesn't mean that those whales have lost hope or lost interest in the underlying asset in Bitcoin or the other cryptocurrencies. On the contrary, perhaps, maybe they want to accumulate more. But is this it? Is it over? Have they finished selling? Is it going up from here? Well, you can't say that at this point. No one knows unless you are the guy who was selling down that five minute candle. Because we don't know if they have another batch of ammunition. We don't know if they have another batch to sell tomorrow. So the strategy that I will take here is to be a little bit patient, see what happens next. Does it come another dump today or tomorrow or not? And then take action from there. Now is the time to analyze the charts. Now is the time to find where is the support levels. And for altcoins, of course, they are affected in US dollar terms by the drop. But now is an excellent time to analyze these altcoins versus BTC and see how they perform on those levels. So let's dive into the charts. All right, you can really see the drop on the Coinbase five minute candles. Those five minutes started at 47,800 and dropped all the way down to 42,800. Incredible, isn't it? Yesterday, only 10 minutes later, price had recovered back to 47,000 again. And I saw a lot of people on social media at that time that talked about now it's really the time to buy. I wasn't so sure because again, we don't know if these people have more to sell. And sure enough, later that day, we actually got another dip down to 44,400. So today is really the time to zoom out guys and not get lost. Because this level here, I didn't draw yesterday. I've had it here for months. And as you see, that's exactly the level where we first broke below and then came back to earlier today. Now we're below again. That was a support here, then it was a support here, then it was a resistance, then we came up, then it acted as a support, as a support, then we fell below it and now it's acting as a resistance. So actually what we want to see here is this level at 47,000 reclaimed and comfortably held. And right now when I'm recording this video, that has not happened yet. That's very important. We want to come back here. We want to see this level comfortably hold for a few days. Then I'll be more comfortable again. Let's look at Ethereum now. No TA is needed to say that Ethereum is going to go down in dollar value if Bitcoin is going down in dollar value like that. But lo and behold, how far it goes down and to which levels, TA can very much explain. Again, these two levels I did not draw yesterday. If you follow me for some time, you've seen them for quite some time. This level here of 2900 was the resistance here, resistance here, 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 and then it flipped support. Support, and now look. That's exactly, exactly, exactly how deep that dip went yesterday. Then we have this level here at 3300. That was important here. And then it became resistance here and here and here and it broke through. And now that gave us some support today. And we're holding above that level now, actually. So in terms of dollar value, this chart looks better. But should Bitcoin dump here now later today, this one is going to dump through as well whatever happens with the Ethereum 2 or whatnot. So let's look at the ETH to BTC chart, because I feel that that provides much more accurate information about Ethereum as such. And here we have this very constructive chart, which offers us a clear support level, which is this 0.55 that I've talked about for ages. Even during the crashes of spring 2021, this level never broke. And Larson Line, my trend indicator of choice, which you should get at ctolarson.com, along with my process, actually never turned blue. And look here, we almost got a retest of this trend line here yesterday. Let's go through the other major coins. BNB, similarly to ETH, offers us a very clear support level. On BNB to BTC, that's on 0.0076. And should that level hold, I will assume bullish continuation on the BNB to BTC chart. BNB to USD looks very similar. We have this extremely clear support level. Look here, held here, held here, held here, held here. And here it was front run. And look how even with this dramatic drop, look how far we are from that level. 
However, that level is at 229, so this is not for the faint-hearted. But remember the entries we talked about here last year? They were at 18. Many of you are XHV fans, so let's look at XHV to USD. Once again, look here at support and resistance. Look here at this level. Resistance, 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 resistance. Then it flipped support, 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 support. And just by noting that, you were able to catch this here at basically 2.8 dollars both here and then you got the second chance here and this confirmed the double bottom let's zoom in a little bit for a double bottom to confirm it needs to break the neckline which it did then approximately here and then actually that level gave you several retests we came up above this level here which now held yesterday and today this is sort of a cup and handle formation not strictly textbook but the psychology is like that i would say and now that's the neckline level that holds so if knowing nothing else and just looking at the ta of this chart this would actually be a favorable risk reward entry but even more valuable is probably looking at the xhv to btc because that eliminates then the movements of the btc whales and look here can it get any easier than this guys you don't need to know all these advanced things you just need support and resistance look here consolidation support 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 it can't get easier than that guys so as long as that support level holds that's a good risk reward because should this project make it i think upside is enormous on this project now let's look at celsius to btc if you haven't watched my interview with alex mashinsky the ceo of celsius you should definitely do that there was a lot of insights about leadership about crypto markets about purpose of life it wasn't just about celsius so even if you're not interested in that project definitely watch that interview i don't think you will regret it now let's look at the chart so Celsius to BTC, look here, wedge, breakout, rally, wedge, do we have a breakout? But I would like to see it a little bit clearer away from here, but this is definitely interesting here, so this is one that I'm monitoring closely. Celsius to USD is also very interesting. Now this line is not completely straight, I've drawn it a little bit sloped, but look here how many touches. I'm not even going to count them because it's too many, I'm too lazy. Even though it's slightly sloped, so it's kind of a trend line, look here at the strength of this support. But we're quite close to this level, which means that you have an opportunity here for a contained risk, if you believe that there's a large upside on this project. Before we continue with the rest of the charts, let's look here at Bitcoin market dominance. Because it's very interesting. You can see how it fell off a cliff during the spring, then it started trending up as people moved back into Bitcoin, back to safety. Then the altcoin rally started again, and now we had this huge crash. Did this one spike up yesterday? No, it did not. So that means that there were not big movements from risky alts back into safe Bitcoin during these two days. We'll have to see how this continues from here, but that's an important observation. That means that a lot of market participants do not really regard this as a major trend shift, at least not yet. They see it as an isolated event and they are happy to still be in the riskier altcoins compared to Bitcoin. Thorchain or Rune, another massively interesting project. If you're into technology, you've got to love this one. I think it's amazing. They had some hacks, they had some setbacks. But now we just look at the chart and look here how easy it is. We have this line that was resistance, it flipped support, it was support, then it became resistance again, then we broke out through that and it was support. And now we're not so far from that level. So again, if you believe that there is upside potential in this project, you can calculate how big your risk is if you decide to bet on that this support line will hold yet one more time. And the Rune to BTC is even more interesting. Look here, we actually have an inverse head and shoulders. Shoulder, head, shoulder, confirmation as it broke through the neckline. Now we're falling down below that level again. So when is an inverse head and shoulder invalidated? It's invalidated if we move below the right shoulder, which is here. That would be at 0 0.00014 approximately. Now we're at 0 0.00019.
Now to many people's favorite coin, Cardano ADA. And look here again, guys, it is so easy. Look here at the support level. I did not, again, I did not draw this yesterday. These levels were here before. We had this level here, which was resistance here, resistance here, it broke out. And now yesterday that resistance level became support. So if you were looking for an entry in that one, you got it here. And you also got it here. This was the previous all time high, which acted as support here and acted as support earlier today. ADA USD looks very similar. We had the previous all time high level here. That was resistance here. Then it broke out. And then that acted as support today. So on the ADA charts, we're actually above the key levels, which is good news for those of you who's into that project. But what about the huge crash in Solana? Guys, we cannot even see it here. And this is the USD chart. Same on the BTC chart. So there's still enormous strength in the Solana momentum. There's no doubt about it. A lot of you have asked me to look at Elrond EGLD in the comments, and I'm happy to serve, so here you go. I've studied the project a little bit, but I don't know enough yet to really have an opinion about the project as such. So I will wait with that, but I will give you the chart here, because it's very easy and very clear. This is the EGLD to Bitcoin, and once again, we are served an incredibly clear and clean range. Look here, here's the bottom of the range, resistance here, support, 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 support. And then on the top end, we have resistance around this area, resistance, resistance. So this chart is in a range. Within a range, there are usually two plays. Either you bet on that it will keep bouncing, so you buy each time at the bottom at the support, and you sell each time at the resistance, assuming that there will be some front run. Or you do the opposite. You wait for a clean breakout, a breakout that holds and confirms, and you buy or long an upwards breakout, or you sell or short a downwards breakout. And then you stop loss and undo the trade if it goes in the other direction. Personally, I'm not so much into ping pong range trading. I feel that the big money is catching the big trends. So personally, I'm more favor of waiting for a breakout and try to catch the next big trend. And the process and tool I use for that is the Larson line. You can get it at ctolarson.com. But if you go back to Bitcoin, we need to see this level reclaimed in case the whales that are dumping have more ammunition. The next level where they will face some opposition from buyers are logically this level. And should that break also, well, then we're down for another hit on 30k, where we've had so much support for so long time. And a lot of people will see that, so I imagine that there will be a lot of buy orders here, should we ever get there. But it could also be that they are done, that this was just a 5 minute quick play, causing cascade liquidation, freeing up a lot of volume for them to buy. Now I will show is something else that's very interesting. If you follow my channel for some time, you remember that in the spring, in May, we could follow what was happening on the Bitfinex BTC USD shorts, BTC USD longs, and then when there was a recovery, we could actually find the bottom down to the hour looking at the Bitfinex ETH USD longs. And as you recall, I speculated that, for example, there could be Chinese miners at that time that were forced to sell. Maybe they hadn't lost faith in Bitcoin or crypto at all, but they had to sell for regulatory reasons. And this was a way to transfer funds. So has the same thing happened now? Is it the same players? No, it hasn't. Look here, there was barely any movement in the shorts on Bitfinex yesterday. So, no, I don't think it's the same players. I think this is another game. Why did they do this on the historic day when El Salvador introduced Bitcoin as legal tender? Well, they did it because a lot of people were long that day, a lot of people were optimistic because of this news. So when they drive the price down, even more people are liquidated, they free up even more liquidity and sell volume. That's why. It's still an actual move. So personally, I want to see the next move before I take my big action. Please like this video and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. Thank you, Tak. See you all soon out. Hey,